Hello guys and welcome to today's video. In today's video we're going to be talking about whether Modern Warfare 3 is a good game and worth buying five months later. And the reason I'm making this video is because right now is the season where Call of Duty starts to die down a little bit. Yes we've got more seasons coming up and more content of course coming but this is when Call of Duty kind of hits its stale point where, you know, some people are still playing it because they enjoy the game. A lot of people might have left the game. That normally happens normally in about January, February time because it's already decided by those players who bought the game at launch whether or not they think the game is a good game. And we're also starting to get to the season where maybe some early leaks will be happening discussing, you know, what the next Call of Duty will be, whether it be Black Ops 5, 6, Black Ops Golf 4, you name it. Call of Duty starts to go through this transition phase of like this game kind of not being the most important thing. It's still being about and having new content and stuff, but it's not the, it's not really as popular as it was, of course, at the launch time. But I want to talk about it today because I know some of you put down in my comments that you were going to buy this game if you thought this was, if you like, could read up and see that this was a good game. And also, you know, for the heavily discounted prices that should be happening right now as we are in March, of course. But anyway, let's talk about Modern Warfare 3, five months on, eh? It's been since, it's been five months, five months since it's launched back in November. Uh, a lot has happened, a lot has changed. Uh, there's been a lot more content added to the game. And realistically, Modern Warfare 3, in my personal opinion, straight out of the gate, has been a pretty solid game. Is it a top five Call of Duty all time? Absolutely not. This is, this is kind of a Call of Duty just that was just in the series. It hasn't done anything game-breaking. It hasn't really changed too much to the series. It's not really going to add features that I feel like are going to change the course of Call of Duty forever. Who knows? It might. Maybe some things will stick around for, you know, the other Call of Duties to come. But Modern Warfare 3 is a pretty solid game. We'll talk about the gameplay's perspective first, which is the movement, which was a great addition, of course. Uh, it went from basically being the game of Modern Warfare 2, which we know this was supposed to be the year, the second year of Modern Warfare 2, but did get changed to be the Modern Warfare 3 and released as a $70 game, which a lot of people were upset about. And I could understand that. That's why I can understand why a lot of you said you weren't going to buy this game at launch and were going to, you know, look at it possibly when it's heavily discounted that because you felt this game wasn't worth it because it was just Modern Warfare 2 year 2 being sold to us as a $70 game and realistically a lot of the things that were put in the game or changed about like Modern Warfare 2 to this game were just movement and gameplay changes that could have been done in a patch the same way with the, the you know at launch of this game we just got all the Modern Warfare 2 maps from you know Modern Warfare 2 back in the day not not Modern Warfare 2 of last year which we also did receive those maps as well so we got even more reused assets I guess which can be a negative can be a good thing it depends how you look at it but I'll talk about that more in a second but gameplay wise we got movement we got a uh, time to kill change so the time to kill wasn't instantaneous uh overall they were great changes for, for for call of duty right it was a lot better than playing modern warfare 2 i like the movement the slide cancelling is not too crazy but it gives those people who enjoy slide cancelling something to you know use and have a skill set i guess to use uh, the time to kill not being too fast. It's just about right. It is literally the perfect time to kill. It's not too fast. It's not too slow. It's perfect. But there's also been other changes that affected the gameplay. For instance, the way stims work. Stims now don't have to, you know, recharge every 20 seconds or so, I believe, which was a very recent update and stuff, which does, of course, affect, you know, how the gameplay goes, how fast, you know, you get into gunfights, how fast you can recover health and stuff. Even the health regen was changed because people were saying that it was far too slow. And we can understand why they made it quite slow in the beginning, but they changed that, they listened to the community, and they made that change too. So from a gameplay perspective, like pure gameplay, Modern Warfare 3 is a good game and definitely worth buying if you get it at a discount, of course. Right Right now, you should not be paying 70 anywhere near $70 for Modern Warfare 3. And if you are, you need to look somewhere else, okay? Do not buy this game for $70. You do not need to buy it for $70. But let's get into it. Let's talk about the other stuff. So let's talk about the gripes that kind of came with the game at launch, which were the reused assets from obviously being kind of the same like looks and feels of Modern Warfare 2. And not only that, the maps being, re you know, just... Modern Warfare 2 maps, OG Modern Warfare 2 maps being brought back for nowadays. And I think a lot of people are upset about that because there wasn't any actual new maps at launch. However, the good news since then, every season that's come along or mid-season updates and stuff, we've got more and more new maps. And safe to say, and in my personal opinion, you guys can let me know down below for those of you who do play Modern Warfare 3, whether or not you agree or not. A lot of the maps, I'd say 9 out of 10 of the maps, have been pretty good additions to Modern Warfare 3. And it's a shame because a lot of them, if they came at launch alongside Modern Warfare 2 OG maps, 
would have been a fantastic launch. Like we would have had some new mod new Modern Warfare 3 maps alongside the OG Modern Warfare 2 maps. It would have been a really good launch. I don't think people would have had as much to be upset about when it came to you know reused assets and the game being $70, etc. Of course, there is a zombies experience and stuff, which I'm not going to talk about too much because we're trying to kind of focus on the multiplayer. Because I feel like a lot of you are, you know, more interested in the multiplayer itself. But yeah, so the release of OG maps was a kind of, in my opinion, a good thing because I like to know that we're going to get good maps regardless, but they should have been releasing new maps at launch. However, they have kind of rectified that and did say that they're going to add maps every season. This was something that I was quite worried about because was it going to be one map every season, two maps, etc. We've had quite a few maps added to the game. And again, they're not ha -ha fast maps. They're not terrible maps. They're actually really good maps that have been great additions to the game. And I personally give sledgehammer quite a lot of props for the maps we've got some of them are pretty you know good ones and i'd say a lot of people would even consider some of them actually call of duty classic maps like ones that you would want to go back and play in another call of duty kind of like what trout does with nuketown every so often so yeah maps been a great addition actual content as well so weapons we haven't we've got new weapons of course every season but we've also had like kind of different weapons to use inside of other weapons so Every week we get new challenges where you can like unlock some jackhammer kit or something that's always called jack something most of the time or a new site or reticle. So I love that. We've had not just new weapons, but we've had new weapons inside of new weapons. We've had new uh, attachments. We've had new uh, kill streaks added as well. I mean, I say kill streaks as it's more kill, sh kill streaks. It's more a kill streak. But we got the swarm added to the game, which isn't as good as the OG swarm. But was still a good addition to the game. It's a nice kill streak to have. Unfortunately, this gameplay is quite old. I don't actually have it in this gameplay. But I've been using it ever since it got added because it's a f nice, fun kill streak to to get and use. And again, was another good addition. But the weekly challenges is great. Gives you something to grind for. Gives you that urge to come on and actually play and use different weapons as well. Because you have to do all different challenges that you know use a recommended weapon and stuff. And I like it. It gives you a lot to play. A lot to do, you know, alongside the camo challenges that everyone, of course, loves to do, which aren't the hardest things to do in the world. I haven't personally completed it myself, but the camo challenges aren't the hardest in the world. There are also camos to earn for events and stuff. The event stuff has been great. A lot of content gets added, and I think the content side of this game has been superb. Like, we have been getting so much content, so many things to grind for. Attachments, new weapons, camos, you name it. There's always something to do. And it's just a lot of fun. New game modes as well, like superhero powers and stuff, themed around certain events and that. that have also been really fun. The recent Juggernaut mode that, you know, I showed you guys a video on how to get an easy nuke on that if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, a lot of great additions. Content side of this game has been fantastic. They have not let this game go. They've even done patches and updates to actually improve the game. And overall, I think Modern Warfare 3, if you can get it at a discounted price anywhere below $50 or £50 or whatever, is a good game and definitely worth your money and i'm not paid to say that i don't want to have anyone in the comments saying that i'm you know i'm an activision shill etc i'm not trying to force through sales here i'm just trying to give you guys the information that you want to hear you know kind of a review at this stage of the game's life cycle for those of you who are looking for the game at a discounted price it is a good game it is worth the money and i think it has you know a great replayability value for its time right now if you can get it for the right price of course However, I will end this video, or the last two minutes of this video, talking about the negatives that you do need to be aware of right now, which I think, you know, you guys need to know. And I, for me, they're not big enough to put me off the game, but some things are, you know, so bad that they do need to be worked on, and it's it's kind of a bit of a gripe with the game at the moment. So we'll talk about the number one, one for me, which is cheating, okay? Right now in this game, there is so much cheating going on. It is absolutely absurd. It is insane how many people are cheating in Modern Warfare 3. I've said this before in a previous video. If you go play Ground War, good luck playing five games in a row without running into a cheater. It is near enough impossible. Rank play has cheaters. Uh, you see it all the time. You see many different cheats at the moment. Some that are quite harmful, which is, of course, you know, the people going around using aimbots, etc. Then you have the people who have, like, lobbies. Like, I walked into one in Infected where someone just has an, had an entire lobby with their own bots or something. It was like an AFK lobby or something. Very weird. You can see all the players moving at the same time. But cheating is a big issue with the game. And also, it's something that isn't going to change and is something that has been addressed, of course, by Activision, and they kind of told us about it. But skill-based matchmaking, it is still 
a, a bit of a downer on the game, unfortunately. It's something that does hold the game back a little bit. I wouldn't say it's the overall be all, and I don't think it massively hinders the game, kind of like we have in previous Call of Duty's. I don't think the skill based matchmaking is that bad, but it is still there. It's still a bit of an issue, and it does, you know, cause for a very negative experience sometimes when you do hop on the game. But those are my only two gripes, really, with the game. But they are big ones. They are ones that massively affect, you know, the ability to play the game and enjoy the game, which is the cheating, which is by far and away absolutely certain. You will notice it when you do play this game, if, of course, you plan on buying it. And again, the, the skill-based matchmaking, which just isn't going to go away, unfortunately. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's little review, kind of telling you whether or not the game's worth or not. I hope you enjoyed that. If you, if you enjoyed today's video, let me know down below what you think. And uh, yeah. If you did, uh, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, subscribe, notifications on. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.